I will now show you how to use the field lineup template that comes with the player lineup pack. The first thing you need to do is go to your browser and then go to your titles and generators sidebar, go to generators, motion master templates, and then do a search for field lineup. Once you have done that, you can use drag and drop it to your timeline. Now we can stretch this open, give it a little more duration, and we can close the browser. Next, we can open up the inspector and start controlling the parameters. The first thing you'll notice is there is an animation at the beginning. You can turn that off if you turn off the build and toggle. So there will be no animation at all. Turn it back on. You'll see the animation occur. Also, we can control the rotation of this animation by adjusting rotate Y. We can rotate on the Y axis, on the X, and on the Z. And we can also adjust the position. Also, under Field of Global Controls, we can turn on or off the angle field. So if you want the field to be angled, just turn it on. If you do not want the field to be angled, just turn it off. That's the way the field will land after the animation occurs. Also, we can control what kind of category we want the field to be. So if we want American football, we can do that. Or we can do soccer. We can do handball basketball, hockey, or baseball. We can also control the field colors. So if you want to change the field color, we can do that as well. To whatever color you want. And we can change the color of the lines. Also, we can add a drop zone. So if we turn on the drop zone and we go into your media browser, go into, let's see if we find the logo that I have here. Select the drop zone and let's choose this one over here and then click on apply clip. Once you have added it, we can control the opacity, position, of the drop zone inside of the, by just clicking on the actual numbers, you can move left or right on the uh, position, or just type it in if you double click on it. And we can also adjust the scale. Also, we have some render intensive controls, and these controls give a little bit more style to the uh, animation but they do require more render time. So what I would recommend is to set up the animation exactly the way you want it to look, prep up the uh, titles, everything you want the animation to look like, and then once you're ready for the final render, then you can turn these on and then go take a little break and then come back. Let me show you how these look. So with the render intensive controls, you can turn on the glint, so it gives it kind of a glow, a glinty glow. You can turn off the light rays, and we can also add some background style. And what that does, it just kind of gives it a little bit more of a background effect in the background. And we can also turn on some depth of field. And whatever objects closer to the camera will be blurred out, and whatever's further away from the camera will be blurred out. Just the things that get right at the middle will be in focus. So once the, cam once the field lands, it will, be it will go into focus. So these are just additional controls that you can use if you wish. And like I said, you can just leave them off until you're ready to do your final render. Just turn the field down to zero, then just play with it, set it all up, and then when you're ready, just turn it back on. And that's pretty much it for the field lineup template. Next, I'll show you how to use the player lineup template. First thing you need to go is to your browser, go to your 
Titles section and go to Motion Master Templates and then do a search for Player Lineup. Once you have found it, just drag and drop it to your timeline. What I would do is just select it and put it right where the field finishes the animation and just line it up there. And that is it. So now we can turn off the browser and start controlling the player lineup template. All right, now we can control how many players we want inside of the controls panel. We can control six, five, four, three, two, or a single one. For this demonstration, let's use three. Okay, we can also control the circle opacity. So let me show you how that works. This works if you have an object that's already keyed. So let me show you here. Let me close this here. Go to the keyed sections. Select the uh, template, make sure it's selected. And let's go down to player one and I can add this drop zone just to demonstrate what I mean. So if you have a player that's already been keyed out, select it and then click on apply clip. Let's close up to this here. Now, if we see, we can actually bring down the opacity of that white background and you can choose that color to whatever color you want. So if you want to bring down the opacity, you can. We can also control the width of the outline. And we can also turn off the roundness. So right now I have a round uh, mask around the player. We can turn that off if you want, if you want to use the full image. So when we do that, we can turn off the outline and we can bring down the opacity of the background and then you have the full player. So that's up to you if that's what you want to use. You can do that. Next thing we can do is we can change the number title. So this title over here, you can use it for anything you want. So if, depending on the sport that you're using, you can use uh, goals, um, wins, whatever it is that you want to add in there. You can do that. And that applies to all the drop zones for all the players. We can also turn the player numbers on or off. So if you don't want the players to have any numbers, maybe you just want to use it just for the name alone, you can do that. You can do that as well. And also we can adjust the size of the players. And this happens to all the drop zones, so they all match to all the players, so they all match. So if you have some players that have really long names, you can just bring the size uh, of the name globally to whatever size you need. Next thing you can do is we can change the color. So we can change the primary color to whatever we want. We can also change the secondary color to whatever we need it to be. We can also change the number color. To anything we want. We can also change the name color. You can also change the text core color. And we can also change the circle of that text score color. We also have some animation controls. The first one I'm going to show you is when the actual players land at the end after they animate in, stay full screen, and then go back down. You can change it to be uh, angled field or no angled field. So that depends on how the field is set up in the background. So if you have the background field flat with no angle, you can turn this off. And if the field is angled, then you just turn this on so it matches accordingly. Also, we have some animation controls. So you see how the animation rotates when it comes in. You can turn off the rotate on the X, Y, and Z. So if you just want it to come off straight, you can just turn all the rotates off and all of them come in straight in. 
or you can turn one or turn them all up, depending on what you want. Also, we have a player hold. You know what the player hold does is it actually holds the player a little bit longer before it goes down to the field. So you can bring this up if you want it to stay on longer. You can do that as well. We can also control the spread. And the spread you see as, as the players come up, one comes up first and then the next one, and then the next one. So we can actually control this spread. So if you want them to come in all at the same time, you can bring this down to zero. If you want a little bit more spread, you can bring that number all the way up to 100. So as you can see, each one comes in at a different time by controlling that spread. Also, in this over here, we have controls to offset the animation when it lands. So for example, you can control the Y offset. So depending on where you want this line to occur, you can control it on a Y position. Or you can control it on the X as well. You can also, at the beginning, you can control the start scale. So if you want it to be bigger, you can do that or make it bigger or smaller. It's up to you. And also you can control when it lands. So if you want it to be bigger, you can do that as well. This all depends on what you're using it for. So if you're using a single player, and you want this to be kind of, kind of a lower third, you can make it as big as you want so it stands out more. The choice is yours. Also, we have some render intensive controls. So this will be things that you um, you might want to add on at the end when your animation is all set exactly the way you want it to appear. You can turn this on like this. And the first one, what it does, it turns on a glint. So it gives it a little bit of a glint effect to the actual players. And the second one, what it does is it blurs the background when it comes full screen. So when it comes close to the camera, everything gets blurred out so you can see the players, so they stand out. And when it goes back down, everything gets back into focus. So those are things you can turn on for a little bit more variety. As far as the players, all the controls are exactly the same for all of the players. So the controls I'm going to show you now will apply to all six players as well. So we can control the drop zone on the X on the Y, and also the scale as well. Also, you can control the offset, so if you want the player to be a little bit higher, a little bit lower, depending on the game and the type of sport that you're using, you might want to have the offset of the actual player a little bit up or down, depending on how you want it. Also, we can control the player number. So if you want to change the number to something else, you can do that. We can change the uh, name. And we can also add some information. So if you want to add a little info bar underneath, you can do that as well. And we can also turn on a flag. So if he has a flag for whatever color, you can do that as well there. You can just turn it on and then choose the color box and change the flag color. And we can also change the score number. And those are the controls for each of the players. Also, if you turn off the info, the flag would just appear underneath the name like that. And uh, that's pretty much it. Those are the controls for the players. And all the controls are exactly the same for all six players. So you can go in there and customize each one individually as you wish. Please let me know if you have any questions or comments at motionmastertemplates.com. Thank you very much for your valuable time and have an amazing day. For more templates and freebies, please visit motionmastertemplates.com.